You think you can do freestanding sissy squat? Yeah, of course I can. You think so? No, actually I don't. <laughs> I don't I don't think you can either. <laughs> yeah. I think I might have one first try though. So we got called out on Instagram. So a couple days ago, we put a post up with a bunch of different exercises that are really good for strength training for runners or strength training exercises that are good for runners. One of the exercises that we put up was a cyclist squat, which is a great exercise, but I either had a slip or spell check got me or something and I labeled it a sissy squat. And somebody called us out and they were super nice. I didn't even notice it until they did, but it got Christy and I talking and we kind of had two different variations. Christy's more familiar with the variation that is like a body weight sissy squat with like no assistance. And I'm more familiar with like a typical gym style, like assisted uh, bench sissy squat. We we're kind of talking about the difference of those and I haven't done either one of those in like years and years. I don't know if Christy's ever done either of them ever, but I think that we can set up an assisted version in the gym. So we're gonna take a trip over there, see if we can set them up, see if either of us can do non-assisted sissy squat. And we're also gonna show you guys some other quad exercises. So those can be a little bit hard to target with just free weights. So we're gonna head to the gym and we'll catch you guys over there. All right, so on the way over here, we were actually talking to, and there's a third variation of the sissy squat, which you can do them in a hack squat machine as well. They look kind of ridiculous. Uh, not that it's a bad exercise, but all of these variations are a little bit more advanced. And I think for most people, you kind of get a little bit more bang for your buck with some simpler exercises, but we're both gonna try these. Uh, I'm completely cold. I've got good ankle mobility and I am quad dominant, so I'm pretty confident right now. A little bit cold, let me at least break parallel. I get one free squat before we try. I think the goal is gonna be to touch your knees to the ground, but maybe not necessary. What do you think? You think I got it? Yeah. You think I got it first try? I do. First or, first or second maybe? Let's see. What do you think, is that good? I'm warming up a little bit. I don't. You don't think, what do you mean? I don't think I'm not even getting so credit for that. Cool. Let's see what you got. Give me that thing. I'm doing a quick shoe change. I think I'm quad dominant. You're not quad dominant. No? What am I? Looks well, here for sure. That's I'm true. Sure. I prefer deadlifts way more than like front squats or anything like that. Or oh, do you guys prefer deadlifts, front squats, back squats? I'm into my shoes right now. Okay. So I'm changing shoes just because these are a little bit flatter. They're not perfect, but they are better. Um, not typically what I would do CrossFit in, but I like to have some cushion. Anyways, I'm going to warm up more than Patrick. Just a couple quad stretches and things like that. I'm like a huge advocate for really good warm ups. He's known for just jumping in. Like when I met him, he just walk up to a bar and clean and jerk like 225 power stops, 225 cold, stuff like that. Okay. I'm not 20 anymore. First warm up. Wow. Yeah, there we go. Do a little bit of this, calf raises. Knee out. This is the most speedy warm up I think I've ever done in my life. I don't even know how to start. <laughs> okay, I gotta get a better try than that. I feel like you just went for it. Am I close? Not really. That's my best attempt. All right, so you guys can let us know in the comments what those look like. I'll have to run that back, see, see how it looked. Um, but I think this is gonna be a more productive version that is actually like a little bit more accessible. This is something that we're gonna test out and actually might implement in the upcoming PFA cycle. So keep an eye out. There'll be two different versions if it does. So. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set this barbell up. I've got the J hook set up to where it's just about kind of at the top of my calves. If you guys have one, I think just like hip thrust, you could do it without a pad, but it's probably gonna be a lot more enjoyable with a pad. So this is a hip thrust pad I'm gonna put on top of the barbell, and then I'm gonna grab some heavy dumbbells to anchor my feet down. We got some 50s on top. I think these will likely be heavy enough. Or actually, these are 55s. We may need to go a little bit heavier, but I think this is gonna work. So basically what I'm setting up here is the version that I'm a little bit more familiar with, and this would be like a machine type version. Uh, typically this is something that might be on the end of like a quad extension machine or something like that. And our goal for these is these dumbbells are gonna anchor my feet so I don't slide forward, and I'm gonna be able to lean back, keeping my chest behind the rig post, and then I'm thinking about extending my hips and keeping my chest back. 
which is gonna make, yep. It's gonna make that target my quads. Two different versions here. One of them's not gonna do a whole lot for your quads, the other is. So if I'm keeping my chest forward and I'm just sitting back and then extending, that almost turns this into a good morning. It's still like almost a posterior exercise. So again, if I'm sitting back, shoulders forward, and then extending all my weights still in the front, I need my weight back behind me. That's what's gonna load my quads. So I'm leaning back first, sitting my butt down like I'm sitting in a chair, keeping my chest behind the post, and then thinking about extending, and then even at the top, I'm still behind the post, leaning back just a little bit, and all that is just firing on the quads. Yeah, that's great. I do not like to use my quads. I think I'm quad dominant. I prefer to use my hamstrings and my glutes, so this is gonna be an excellent exercise for me. So again, sitting back, trusting yourself, trusting yourself. Oh my gosh. That is so challenging. I feel like I could have like five total reps. What I naturally wanna do is I love the hinge. So I naturally wanna sit back and then push my hips back like Pat was saying, don't do into this hinge position and then stand. And then I feel nothing in my quads. The goal is to feel it in our quads. So I'm gonna try again. Really focus on keeping my mid leg tight. I'm slowing it down to make sure I'm not hinging. I find that when we slow things down, we can make sure we're in the right positions than the wrong positions if we're going too close. So this is one of my absolute favorite quad exercises. I use this a ton to help me keep my knees healthy when I was training for the games. And this one shows up in our lift run program often because we put a lot of pressure on our quads and on our knees when we're running. So all you're gonna need is something to sit on that's elevated from the ground. It doesn't have to be a box, it could be a bench. Then you're gonna need a foam roller. It doesn't need to be a long one, it could be a short one. Essentially something to put under our knee and then a kettlebell so we can hook our foot through it. The bigger the kettlebell, the heavier you're gonna be, but you'll have more space to put your foot through. So I am starting here with an 18 pound kettlebell. Then from here, I'm gonna slide the foam roller right underneath of my knees. So you can see now I have a better range of motion for this extension. Then I'm gonna take my kettlebell and I'm gonna put it on my toe and slide it all the way back as close to my shoelaces as I can. Keep my midline active. And from here, I'm just gonna think about engaging my quad, squeezing, and then coming back down. This is one of my all time favorite moves and something that you will see a lot in our programming. So when I'm doing this, I like to have control. So there's a controlled descent, a one second squeeze at the top, feeling the quad engage, getting the extension through the leg, and then I let the heel drop back down. So you'll notice the foam roller helps from the heel hitting the box. Typically when we're doing this, I'm going for three sets of anywhere from eight to 15 reps, depending on the load that I have on the leg, the heavier the load, the less reps, but we wanna make sure that we're going, you know, an RPE of seven plus. So by those last couple reps, it's really starting to burn. And that way we know we are getting that adaptation and we're working the quadricep the way we want to be. I love being creative with bands. So what I'm gonna show you guys is a banded quad extension. So I'm gonna take my J hooks, I'm gonna put them nice and low on a rig post. It's best if you have opposing J hooks. So they're locking to the outside of the post. If you don't have a posing so that they're not pulling into the each other you can tie one side of the band to the post and then hook it on the other j hook but i'm just going to loop my band on either side of the j hook i've got my bench elevated i've got a four inch plate on either side just so that it's up off the ground i've got enough room so that my feet aren't hitting the floor i'm going to hold on to the bench with my hands i've got the band right about my ankles and i'm going to get full range of motion extension at the top, getting a nice squeeze in my quads. Sometimes we'll do these 100 reps, nice and light. Sometimes we'll have a little bit more of a band for more resistance. It's pretty versatile and it completely targets the quads without getting any other muscle group involved. If you don't have posts, you can still set these up. What I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna take my bench, I'm gonna swing it around, got another plate set up, and instead of the post, I'm gonna take my red band underneath this dumbbell, I've got a matching dumbbell on the opposite side and I'm gonna have the same setup. So no posts involved, just our dumbbells. I'm gonna pull these up over my shoelaces so they're right on my ankles again. Grabbing the bench, sitting nice and flat, nice tall chest, extending. And again, great way to target the quads. We love doing these for burnout sets. So after we've done either a leg day or quad specific exercises, these are a great way to just kind of burn things out. 
My next favorite exercise is going to be a knee over toes split squat, and I'm gonna elevate my front foot. So a lot of times we think, oh, I shouldn't drive my knees out over my toes, but we can actually use that movement in a controlled manner to strengthen our quadriceps, which are gonna actually make our knees feel better. You can load this however you want, but the foundation of the exercise doesn't change and the technique doesn't change. So I've got a 45 pound plate here. I'm gonna put one foot all the way onto the plate. I don't want my heel hanging off. I wanna make sure I have a really good foundation. Then I'm gonna take a good healthy step back for my split squat stance position. I'm gonna leave that foot back to complete all of my reps. And as I do this, I'm gonna keep my chest upright and I'm gonna focus on trying to drive my knee out over my toe, but while keeping the heel down on the plate. So then to drive out of this, I'm driving back up. So it's knees are coming forward, midline staying tight, chest is staying vertical, and then I'm coming back up. That is going to really work our VMO and work our quadriceps. Like I said, you could have a back rack doing this from the rack. You could have a front rack, you could have kettlebells, you could do one kettlebell on either side, ipsilateral or suitcase hold. So I'm gonna show you today is actually a farmer's hold with a kettlebell in each hand. So I'm gonna grab a kettlebell in each hand. I'm gonna take one foot, I'm gonna put it on the plate. You can actually start with both if you would like. Take a nice, good, healthy step back. Notice I'm on the ball of my back foot so that leg is not locked out, but I have a soft bend. Keeping my shoulders pulled back and down, I'm gonna think about sending my knee forward while keeping my heel glued to the plate, and I'm gonna drive myself back up. I'm gonna complete eight to 10 reps on one leg, and then I'm gonna switch. I love the single leg variations because you're gonna figure out if one leg is stronger than the other or if you have any imbalances. Especially for those of us who like to run, you're loading one leg at a time. So it's just a really great way to train both sides of the body separately for that unilateral work. All right, I'm sticking with the theme of the band. I love bands. This is something that we've been playing with. This one actually will be making it into the upcoming cycle and it's gonna be a banded heels elevated squat. We've got one of the heel elevated boards at the house, which even has hooks for this, which makes it really nice, but you can use a plate as well. So all we need is a band and something to elevate our heels. I'm gonna start by getting this thing underneath my feet and my heels are on the plate. I've got a 45 here, it's about a two inch rise. Then I'm gonna get this band over top of my shoulders. So it's coming around my neck, over the front of my shoulders. And I want my toes pointed forward in a little bit more narrow of a stance. The plate makes it a little bit more natural to wanna to have that narrow stance, but that also helps target our quads. If we got a wide stance and our feet, our toes pointed out, we're gonna to wanna to use our post here. We've got a more narrow stance and our toes pointed forward. It's gonna make it easier for us to use our quads. So the most tension is gonna be at the top. Less tension is gonna be at the bottom. Staying nice and tall, squatting all the way down. We get a nice good range of motion. So for those of you guys who don't have the best ankle mobility, this is a great way to get to the bottom of a squat without maybe needing any sort of assistance. Or I mean, I guess this is assistance, but this just helps us get to the bottom of the squat if mobility is not a strong suit. Uh, we did something the other day, Christy and I did a squat session, and then afterwards we went ascending, we went 20, 40, 60, 80 back and forth. So she would go, I would go, trying to do each one unbroken. I think we had some little like rests at the top there, but it's a great burn. The first 10 or so feel pretty easy. And after that, it's a big burn. So hopefully these were helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, you have any other movements you want to see, put them in the description below. We hope you guys found this valuable and informational and different ways to train your quads. Let us know what you thought of our sissy squats at the start. Did mine even count? Was it even a sissy squat? I'm not sure. We gotta roll the footage back. Give it a try. Let us know if you can do it. If you have any other quad variations that you love to do, we'd love to hear in the comments as well. I think the most important piece of all, never skip leg day. We'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one. Don't forget, smash the like button.